AMD and OpenAI have just launched a massive deal worth a tremendous amount of money for OpenAI. So the SEC filings are in and the 8K report is out and I have been reading this 8K and in the first paragraph I knew I had to go and make a video about this because of some of the things that it was talking about. If you haven't heard, in short, we've got a big announcement today from OpenAI and also AMD for the first six gigawatts of AMD GPUs to be deployed as part of Project Stargate. This is huge for AMD. This is much needed for AMD. And OpenAI strategically has made an incredibly important move, definitely cements them in a very firm leadership position. The tranches that are described are the first gigawatt being a milestone with the release of a first batch of the warranted. So these warrants are exercised for a penny. So let's take a look at the actual form here. So common stock 0.01 par value. So common stock important here also to know is what's being offered here to OpenAI. And this first tranche of shares investing with the delivery of the first initial one gigawatt of AMD Instinct MI450 series GPU products. Okay, so let's break down some of the stuff you probably aren't gonna get on some other channels here. So the MI450 series, current generation. However, the actual announcement states that this is multi-year, multi-generation. So definitely not something that we're gonna see delivered over the 2025 time span, but probably 2026, that first gigawatt of AMD deployment of AMD Instinct MI450 GPUs set to begin on the second half of 2026. And I know in Abilene, I believe, they have a data center for part of Project Stargate being built out. There is quite a lot of build out happening around this right now. And this is going to eventually fully vest for 160 million shares roughly about 10% of AMD's stock here. But one of the things that is important to note that I, I, this is why I had to check. I was like, is there something stated about the vesting of the warrant shares subject to, and the subject to matters a lot in something like this kind of a financial arrangement for AMD, for the shareholders. We haven't got to the winners and losers here yet, but you hear that construction outside my house. This is the kind of noises that are gonna be happening as AMD cashes in on a move that absolutely was needed. And 10%, if you look at the actual investments that AMD has made versus the return on those investments for the GPU unit, is probably a very smart strategic move for AMD, also now joining the Project Stargate. So the vesting warrant shares further subject to achievement of specific common stock price targets that escalate to 600 per share for the final tranche of stock performance thresholds. Additionally, each tranche of vested warrant shares is subject to the fulfillment of certain other technical and commercial conditions. Of course, the actual deployment, the actual functioning. So OpenAI, really up to the hilt here with AMD on this. And, you know, I think that they knew they were taking on, this is just my speculation, a lot of engineering work on their side to make sure that they are up to scale with massive training or inference workload sets on the MI450 and the future AMD Instinct generations that are yet to be released. And they knew that this is a commitment and they wanted 10% of AMD to be able to take this commitment. You can go log in all these links in the description below, but I'm basically just going to official sources here. I'll also link the 8K for you if you haven't had a chance to check that out. And it expires in 2030. So it is a short duration time frame, given that it starts in 2026. There's a certain amount of tranches. Each one of those tranches is going to be basically having a target execution price for the shares. So the value of AMD's stock between now and 2030, AMD just said they think is going to be going from, I think we're at 200, let's take a look here, 209 today for AMD's common share price. And so they're saying that that's gonna go to 600. 3X, that definitely depends upon the success of this deployment. And I know I just recently did a video talking about budget GPUs, completely the opposite of everything data center happening. They also use the same software stack, rock M underneath the hood here. They are making a commitment to make the software work with the hardware. I mean, there are, of course, fulfillment of certain other technical and commercial conditions prior to the exercise. And them having that gigawatt of power to put at this is just tremendous. And you might be wondering why Abilene, Texas? The amount of 
actual clean power that is windmill generated in West Texas is astronomical. And the ability to transport power over incredibly long distances, so the utilization of it there actually could be a lot of the bleed off that you might get in just the transmission of it. Basically, it becomes kind of a better usage of electricity if you're looking at where you locate a data center. So someplace like Abilene starts making a lot of sense. There's a lot of places that may not be exactly where a city center is, where data centers get deployed, and it may not actually make a lot of sense to a lot of people. But definitely that one, in my opinion, makes a lot of sense for the energy delivery portions of this. But yeah, this is absolutely the right move. Definitely want to stay tuned for who I think are the winners and the losers and what the long-term ramifications are of, of this power play. Going into the winners, this is Lisa Sue winning. And she knew, in my opinion, that AMD was weak. Their actual spend and the actual uptake of the AMD Instinct lineup has not been what they are hoping for. That's not a secret. They literally have people opting to wait extra years to take delivery. I believe it's 2027H2 where you can take delivery of the B300. And so even with that considerable time trade-off, people still opt to go with NVIDIA. Why? Because it's so proven out on the software side. And so people are willing to wait even an extra year for the delivery of systems in NVIDIA's case over AMD in the current state. Why is there such a parity mismatch? It makes a lot of sense to me why this is such a winning move for Lisa Su. Availability it should factor in typically if there was parity between products. This clearly points to there not being parity between products. That parity hopefully gets made up. I really do want to see AMD become a very successful competitor. It's very risky to have any single sourced company be the entire headwind of all IP that is state of the art. If you look internationally, we see definitely Huawei with their Ascend lineup offering really compelling yet really energy inefficient options out there. So this is a win for Lisa Sue. Sam Altman and OpenAI. Um, well, it, it, provided that these are usable and provided they can be made usable, this is going to be a huge win for Sam Altman. I mean, I, a tremendous win. This is a win no matter what, because upon delivery and installation and other technical, we don't know what all those are, requirements, this is going to make the legal thing between X and Sam Altman even more juicy. I have a feeling. I have a feeling. But this definitely is a win for them. 10% of AMD. That's nothing. That's not nothing. That's, that's a significant share of AMD. And I mean, that makes you a very important company in the guidance of a significant potential supplier. This is huge for OpenAI. So definitely a win for Sama. This guy pulls wins out of his hat like crazy. The rest of the participants in Project Stargate, of course it's a win for them. So I think this is probably going to help the build out look better and better. That's my guess. Now, this is a lot of expense and where the expense comes from is definitely OpenAI. And they just launched around. Like, like, let's talk about the real winners here. Those investors who just got in and prior investors in OpenAI, those people are probably the biggest winners. And I mean literally the biggest winners when OpenAI goes public and they're able to sell off some portion of their shares. Those people probably win quite big here. And definitely, if you get a chance, do listen to the conference call. Lisa Sue is absolutely, you can just hear a spark going there that she is she likes this. And let's talk about Big Green in this. So I imagine this is actually good for NVIDIA as well in a lot of senses. We're going to see the technical manifestation of their biggest competitor with known knowns as far as what the performance is. Is AMD really going to be able to step up in the same manner, especially on the networking side, that NVIDIA is? That one right there, the networking side, is a big component of what one of the problems is out there on a hardware level side, AMD offering more bandwidth, more functional theoretical bandwidth, but how much of the bandwidth can be utilized, that always is a huge question. And especially when you're looking at training and the need to interconnect tremendous rows, tremendous amounts of rows, com complete data centers need to be connected in the near future here, I'm sure. That right there is going to be, I, I mean, that's going to be AMD's biggest challenge because right now they are behind. I mean, NVIDIA acquiring Mellanox years and years ago, super strategic move, 
really highly competitive has really accelerated where they were at as far as the networking side of this, which incredibly important also. And having all of the American biggest tech companies working together as a whole of one is most likely going to lead to, first off, some intense rivalry and competition, which should manifest as better products in the cloud for us and also as consumers for us, hopefully, in the next couple of years. So especially on the AMD side, they have been putting tremendous amounts of work into things like PyTorch and the various software out there for actually utilizing their AMD GPUs. That's the kind of development we wanna see continue. And this should absolutely fuel that. So I would also like to postulate the other winners me and you as consumers are very likely winners. Anybody that's an AMD computer user right now, uh, as far as their GPU side, probably ends up winning on this because the software stack is going to mature along the way also. That's going to be awesome. So who would be the losers in this? Well, this is interesting. The shareholders of NVIDIA, they may be kind of short term. And they may be actually, when it actually gets delivered, when we can actually see, can these hurdles technically be overcome by AMD? Jensen, I think Jensen wins in this because he has been saying vocally that he wants to see additional alternatives to NVIDIA. But also at the same time, I have a feeling that he wants to know about them in advance and he wants to know how much they're shipping and he wants to be able to plan things out pretty well. So whether or not that happened, I couldn't tell you. If you looked at the actual number of GPU units being used in the world, NVIDIA was, without a doubt, the furthest in the lead by not an insignificant margin. After, after that, it could have been a fairly tight competition between AMD and Huawei. This puts AMD, in my opinion, into a really killer position to make a lot of advancements that are needed because Huawei is not sleeping over there. They have huge energy inefficiencies in some of their chips that probably isn't gonna fly very well from a regulatory and a PR standpoint in the United States, we see DeepSeek coming out soon, most likely, in a fully native, and this probably is gonna be a really good model when it comes out, trained in native GPUs. That is going to be a technical feat that will be noticed and that will possibly have impact. For right now, I think the Chinese are probably the biggest losers in this. And hopefully this construction is happening right now at the Stargate facility for AMD's install with OpenAI. And I'm excited for that first gigawatt of AMD GPUs to go online and us to finally start seeing what is actually possible from big deployments of AMD GPUs and also seeing their software stack improve. So this is my take. I look forward to reading your take in the comments below. Be sure to hit that like, subscribe. Also, big hats off to all of our Buy Me Coffees, all of our YouTube channel members. You can join down below, click that button. And to everybody else that shares this out there, thank you very much for all you guys do. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Check you out next time.